Let's go ahead. We, we got talking about the past couple uh, of, in the past week along the lines of confession. It kind of veered off and, and went some different directions. But let's go ahead and pick up and let's, let's, let's go ahead and teach this out. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so we said this, that the words of our mouth govern our lives. In other words, you, you, you get what you say. If you're going to say it, you're going to get it. Now, I'm not going to say we say it one time, and, you know, you're going to get it. I mean, if that happened, everybody would, you wouldn't, you know, we probably wouldn't live. We didn't have a human race at all, you know. That tickled me to death, or I thought it lasted hard, I thought I'd die. Well, see, that's not going to kill you the first time you say it. What it is, it's the language of death. It's the, have you ever noticed that we don't have, man, I lasted so hard, I thought I'd live forever. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Uh-uh. Man, I, 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 that just tickled the life into me. No. What are our expressions? Our expressions tend to be death or lifeless expressions. You boy, you're going to worry me to death. Hello? Instead of, boy, you're going to follow God and produce life in me. We always talk about death. Why is that? <clears throat> it is because the world is a death-ruled world. Remember, God, the, the, the Word of God says that Satan is the God of this world. It says, on whom the God of this world, the blind of the eyes of them, said, lest they believe. All right? So Satan is the God of this world. And so this world is a, has a death-oriented language. We can't, I mean, like, like I said earlier, we can't even talk about being tickled or being full of joy without talking about it. It, it, it kill us. Right, why? Because the, the world system is a system governed by the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of death. Therefore, the language of that world. For as a believer, if you're going to live in the things that God has for you, you're going to have to learn to live out of the kingdom of life. That means life becomes your language. It becomes the language of the believer. Amen. Jesus said, you know, uh, that sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. They also said in another place, thy word is, the, 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 thy word is, they are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is life to us. The, the psalmist or a Proverbs writer said that the, the, the Word of God is health or medicine to all his flesh. And so, the, so speaking life is contrary to this world system. Now, go to work. Go, go hang out with some friends. Somebody get talking. Man, man, never, you just scared me to death. And then, and, and, you know, you hear him say that, and then you just go, wow, man, you stole the life of God into me. And see what happens. Nobody will even acknowledge they said, you never scared me to death. They, they, won't, they won't flinch. They won't, they won't have any weird looks. They won't have anything when you hear these, if they say that. You say something about that, that, that startled me and put the life of God in me, and you'll get all kinds of weird looks. Eyes will roll. Why? Because you're speaking contrary to the system. You're speaking contrary to the way the world works. You're, you're going upstream. I said you're going upstream. And everybody knows when you're going upstream, it's, it's, it's more difficult than to go with the flow. Now, me and Nathan, we, we have a, a pretty much an annual uh, camping trek. We go over to, uh, to Cherokee and go up in the big cove up there and camp out the KOA. And he, he catches fish in the, in, the, in the tribal waters and catches him some trout. And he comes and cleans them. And, and I promised him this year I'd eat them, and I did. It's the only year I'll ever promise that. Hallelujah. I did like it. I don't like the bones. Too many bones. I'm a lazy eater. You got... That's right. I'm a lazy eater. And, uh, but then we all, one of the things we always do is we go, we, uh, you, at the campground, you can pay to go tubing, and they'll take you about three miles up river and put you out, and you just float down the river. A lot of fun. takes about, you know, depending on the height of the water, hour and a half, three hours, depending on how fast the water's flowing. But I've noticed this. You know, I've noticed that if I don't do anything, I float down the river. If I want to go down, if, if you see your head into an area you don't want to be in, it takes a lot of work not to go there if, the, if that's where the water's going. And when you, if you've ever been on the river, the whitewater rafting or, or, or canoeing or anything, you learn to read the river. You, you can see where the strongest uh, current on that river is. And if you want to go with it, you stay right out in the middle of that. If you want to eddy out, you've got to paddle hard to get out of that and get over to where the water's not flowing like that. See, it's easy to go with the flow. The water's naturally going downriver. <laughs> I wouldn't want to try going up that river. 
It's going downhill. I mean, it's got some good push. And, and then what I'm trying to say is this. And, and, and that is a natural example of the way life is. It's easier to go with the flow. If you want to go up river, on, 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 if it's deep enough, you're going to have to put a, boat, a motor on your boat and turn it up river and let it go because it's, it's almost impossible to paddle up river. Hello? You just can't do it. And so life is that way. You've got to, you've got, you can either go with the flow, which is the way the world system, and I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like, it's, you know, the end of the world's flow is like Victoria Falls, right into the abyss. Anybody ever seen pictures or seen videos of Victoria Falls over in Africa? I think it's the headwaters of the Nile. I mean, it's huge. They're, they make Niagara look like a wimp. Okay, they're, they're, they're massive falls. And, uh, you, you know, if you keep going down river, you might think it's cool, but, you know, when you, you fall off, you're not going to think it's cool. And that's the way the world is. And so our mouth is what governs how we're going. You can speak the language of the world, which is easy. Everybody does it. Nobody thinks you're weird if you say tickled to death, last of heart I thought I'd die. Hello? None of those things startle me to death. Nobody thinks twice about that. Start speaking life and people look at you. But see, if you're going to live in the abundance of God, the, uh, the power of that life and death is in the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof, you're going to have to speak life. Everybody say speak life. Now, we said this already. The, the psalmist said in Psalm 19, 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, <clears throat> for the believer, we are to speak words out of the, uh, out of the realm of life. Where is that realm going to come from? Well, it comes out of God, but where, where are we going to get it as, a, as an individual? Where are you going to get the words of life from? You're going to get it from where? The, the Bible, the Word of God. That's where you're going to find it. You're, in other words, as a believer, if you want to govern your life in accordance with the Word of God, you, you, can't, do, you can't have the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and you can't have the hope so's and the maybe so's. You're going to have to make a deliberate, uh, responsible, active lifestyle of putting the Word of God in you so that you can get the Word of God out of you. Amen. See, your mouth is like a computer. Now, if you, if you have any... any association with computer programming or, or, or even this jargon is pro probably or acronym is probably well known by now but on the old days we used to say g-i-g-o because everybody the computer operators or the or the people who were getting reports if they came out and they weren't right they'd say that stupid computer messed it up no 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 you go back and you find out that, that there wasn't the stupid computer it was the key punch operator or the data entry person who put garbage in and when you put garbage in, you got garbage out. So G-I-G-O meant garbage in, garbage out. All right? It didn't matter how great the computer program was. If you didn't put the right data in, you couldn't get the right answers. It just didn't matter. I don't care what you did. <clears throat> the computer was not going to take what you put in there and change it to what it was supposed to do. The program was written and designed, and I, I was a computer programmer, you, you would design the program to take data, manipulate that data, and whatever, you know, add it, multiply it, move it over here, do whatever you were going to do with it, and then output answers or, or a data simulation or, or, or a, a compilation or whatever. Whatever you were trying to get to, the computer simply by formula and by how you designed the program took that and did it. If you put the wrong stuff in, you got the wrong stuff out. This stupid computer ain't working. You go right back in there, put the right stuff in, and you got the right stuff. You got the right answers. Okay? So your life is the same way. Your mouth is like a computer. It simply gives the response based on what you put in. Jesus said, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. Amen? And then, then the Word of God, he went on and said this. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. The mouth speaks in accordance as to what is in the abundance of the heart. If you put it in in abundance, you're going to get it out. You put the junk in in abundance, you're going to get junk out. You put worldliness in in abundance, you're going to get worldliness out. You put F-bombs in in abundance, you're going to get F-bombs out. Hello? 
You sit around and listen to that all the time, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. Right, because that's what's going in in abundance. For the believer, that's why the Word of God tells us to study to show ourselves approved. Joshua 1, 8, turn over there, look in your Bible, I want you to see this. Joshua has written there in chapter, verse 8 of chapter 1, it says, This book of the law, now understand at the time that Joshua was written, there were only six books of the Bible. Okay, or the, uh, you know, you had the book of Job, which is the oldest chronological book of the Bible. And then you had the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch. And so you had, you know, and, and so they refer to all of Moses' writings as the law. Okay? So they get into Deuteronomy and they say this, this book of the law. What, 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 what was the book of the law at the time? The word of God. It's the word of God that they had at the time. So they call it the book of the law, but it was the writings of Moses. It was the word of God they had at the time. So let's bring that New Testament. Because New Testament, you know, we've got all the, old, uh, you know, we've got all 66 books now. If you're a Protestant, you've got more if you're Catholic. <clears throat> I mean, well, you do, but just, you know, the, the Protestant church recognizes 66 books of canon. So, you know, since we're Protestant, we'll just say we'll recognize the 66. All right? Now, it says there, this book of all, let's make it New Testament, the Word of God. Shall not depart out of where? Out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein. Now, the interesting word, the word meditate in the Hebrew doesn't mean hum. That's not what it means. It literally means to mutter. To mutter. Now, how many have ever muttered? Oh, yeah, you've muttered. Under your breath. In the parking lot, stupid idiot, what do you mean pull that in front of me? You're talking, you're talking to yourself. Ever hit your finger? You mutter. Man, that hurts. You're just talking to yourself. Ever, ever, been, ever been around somebody who mutters all the time? You want, what'd you say? Nothing. Yeah, she did, I heard you. I was talking to myself. Well, you're muttering. So the Bible says this. It says, the word of God should not depart out of your mouth, but you shall mutter it. Day and night, you shall speak it. Day and night, why? Here's, there's a reason for doing it. It's not just so you can memorize it. Memorization is good, but I'm telling you, see, muttering it goes beyond memorization. Muttering it is, is planting it into your spirit. It's planting the Word of God into you. It's storing up treasure in your spirit, glory to God. So he says here, he says, the book of law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall mutter it day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Now, notice the purpose of putting the word of God in, in abundance is so you can observe to do it. Why? Because the power of life and death is in the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So when you're speaking what the Word says constantly, then you are now able to go out and observe to do according to all that is written therein. Excuse me, my shoe came untied. I about to trip myself. Wouldn't that have been cute on the camera? I've been standing here with, right out of there. And I would have hopped up. Woo! Glory to God. I, fell under the power <laughs> of the right foot on my shoestring. All right, so now you're going to mutter it, you're going to speak it, and now why? So you may observe to do it. Let me say this. It's difficult to observe to do what you have not planted or muttered or sown into your own heart. Amen. See, we, we, get, you know, we come to church, and listen, I, I, Jesus preached to get about sin. Jesus preached about hell. I believe it's right to tell people don't do stuff. I think you're lying to him when you tell him it's okay to go out and do it. God don't care. <clears throat> if that were so, he, would, he, he could have done away with a whole bunch of Bible. I said he could have done away with a whole bunch of Bible. But it just, if it didn't matter to him. Hallelujah. But a lot of times we'll tell people, don't do this, don't do that. But we don't tell them how. How do you not do it? You say what the Word says. I don't yield my, mem my body as, and, and, and members of my body as servants of unrighteousness. I don't yield them to this. And I don't yield them to that. I don't yield them to this, this temptation. 
Why? Because the greater one's in me. See, if you speak what the Word says, you're meditating, you're muttering it. Now, here's, what, here's when the... I, I'm going to stay right there. You're going to live there because you're muttering it. <clears throat> One of the things we did back in the 70s and 80s on teaching on confession was we got people confused about what the confession of faith was and what meditation was. They sound a lot alike. As a matter of fact, they sound exactly alike. I believe that I received my healing according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, by his stripes I am healed. Well, if there's no faith there, what are you doing? You're muttering. You're meditating on it. And so we got people running around saying, if you say it one time, I say it again, that second time is unbelief. And they weren't in faith the first time. They never meditated in it long enough so they could observe to do it. So what? So that when they spoke it in faith, it came out where they could do it because they were now in faith about it, not just muttering or meditating on it. You got to meditate on the word. I said, you got to meditate on the word. You got to feed on the word of God. Isn't that right? Run over. Then we're gonna hold your place in Joshua one eight, but run over real quick to Romans chapter twelve. Romans chapter twelve. And I do a teaching on this, and I'll, and I'll do it at, every once in a while. I'll just do it, because it's good. Some things you just need to teach over and over again. How many of you have ever had a T-bone steak before? Raise your hand. At least once in your life you've had a T-bone steak. How many would have one again? And after you have one again, how many would probably have another one after that? All right. How about Pastor Ed's famous Down East Barbecue? Fried chicken. How many would have it again? Why? Because it was good. Amen. Did you know just because you, you've heard the word of God one time on a certain matter or a certain subject doesn't mean you should never hear it again? As a matter of fact, some things you have to have over and over and over and over and over and over again until you get it right. Isn't that right? Isn't that correct? Look at Romans chapter 12. We'll start in verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which are uh, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable now or spiritual service. The word reasonable can be translated spiritual service. Be not conformed. Conformed Greek word meaning fashion, shape, molded according to the world or this world. But be ye transformed. Metamorpho in the Greek. That ain't hard to figure out where we got out of that, is it? Metamorphosis. Tadpoles, the bullfrogs caterpillars to butterflies amen they're, they're complete metamorphosis of their of, of their nature of their existence how they function amen i mean can you can you think about the, the, the caterpillar to, to a butterfly is really the, the big one that's that's i mean that that little thing just crawls around eats leaves and slithers around and eats leaves and you know nathan was giving us a visual thank you said let's see what you do with this one Builds itself a cocoon, comes out of the cocoon flying. No, I don't. <laughs> we'll find out who's got more faith. His faith to fly, or my faith to raise him up. There's a complete transformation of the function and operation of that caterpillar once it becomes a butterfly. Same thing with a tadpole. It just lives in water, swims around. One day it starts, you know, start, the tail starts to shrink. The legs start to grow. comes out of the ground. It no longer breathes, you know, through, through the gills. It, it breathes oxygen in lungs. It's had a metamorphosis. And the Bible says, do not be fashioned, shaped, molded to the world, but experience a metamorphosis. How? By the renewing of your mind. You see, if you're going to have the right confessions, you're going to have to renew your mind with the right stuff. Let me say this. It's already been trained to think unbelief, death, doubt, and failure. The world system does that. Are you here? You're going home. The world's, you know, I mean, we, you know, just barely getting by. Can't, I just can't get by. Ain't never going to make it. You know? I mean, we scratched out a little. We just barely get along. And life is tough. Yeah, it is. Don't know how we ever make it. Oh, I don't know if we're going to make it. See, you're speaking the world system. 
You've been trained to think that way. Hello? We got you, people have been trained to think that people of certain races get ahead when they can't. People of certain genders think they've been trained. That, you know, they can't get ahead because they're the wrong sex. People can't get ahead because they're the wrong color. We've never preached that here. As a matter of fact, we've preached it. It doesn't matter if you're what color you are, what your sex is. If you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, purple, green, or, or, or yellow. If you're a baby bop or pink, the purple dinosaur Barney. It doesn't matter. Because if you'll take the Word of God and put the Word of God into your life and renew your mind with the Word of God and not be fashioned according to this world, amen, you'll be able to rise up. And we've seen people do it. We've seen people take the Word of God, you know, and say, you know, well, you can't get ahead because there's, there's a white man in charge. It doesn't, God can move that white man. I'm telling you. God can make that white man go somewhere else. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if the imperial wizard or the KKK is your boss. God can make you rise to the top. Why? Because that's what his word says. I said that's what his word says. And they'll, they'll be doing stuff for you. Like, I don't even like you when I'm giving you this race. Tough. God's favor is making you do it. See, when you put the word of God in you, and everybody around you saying, you can't make it because you're a black man. You can't make it because you're a woman. You can't make it of, because you're a Native American or, or engine, 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 this engine. My wife's part Cherokee. Too much Cherokee. Anyway, that, that Cherokee comes out every once in a while. <laughs> She's not in here. That's why I'm saying it because I don't want to get hurt. I bought a tomahawk one time. It's about that big on a keychain. That's, that's the only one she's ever going to get a hold of. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. I've watched people take the word of God. And in, and in a place where all, all those who, who say that you can't achieve and you can't advance and you can't do because of the color of your skin, they took the word of God and they renewed their mind with the word of God. And they found out they had favor with God and man, glory to God. And they found out that the word of God caused them to rise up to the top, praise God. That God blesses their comings and their goings, hallelujah. And they walk in with the favor of God. And I've watched them rise and rise and rise and rise, right on up companies. Why? Because of the favor of God. See, we can't think the way the world thinks. You got people in the world who say, unless you have the government helping you, you can't make it. I got news for you. There is one that can, make, that can help you no matter what the government can or can't do. His name is Jehovah Rapha. His name is Jehovah Jireh. His name is Jehovah Shalom. He's the almighty God. Glory to God. He'll cause you to live up on the highest places. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I'm telling you, don't you trust, don't, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, hallelujah. We put our trust in God, not in man. Somebody shout hallelujah real loud. Hallelujah. See, I, I expected to see three people running right then. That was good running preaching. Amen. See, the Word of God, when you put it in your mouth and you begin to speak it, you begin to transform everything around you, glory to God. You begin to change the circumstances around you. You begin to change those things that are arrayed against you. Hallelujah. We need to get like the prophet of God whose servant came out one day and said, Oh, boss, we're in trouble. Amen. He said, what are you talking about? He said, well, the armies of the, of, of the enemy have surrounded us. He said, son, there's more to be with us than be with them. He looked there and he thought maybe the boss slept in, you know, the prophet boss slept in a little bit too late. You've been dipping into the Sacramento wine? I mean, so what's going on there, boss? One, two, one, two, three. There, I've already counted three. I've already counted more over there than we got. Had this conversation for a few minutes. He finally said, Open his eyes, Lord. And he looked up and saw the host of the chariots of the armies of the Lord and camped round about them, glory to God. I want you to know that what you cannot see with the natural eye, you will begin to see with the spiritual eye when you begin to speak and say what the Word of God says about everything. It transforms and changes, glory to God. It's easy to say what you got. I said this before in the past. Keep saying what you got, and you're taking your past, and you're casting into your future to walk in tomorrow. And if you don't like what you got, and you don't like what you're, where you've been, you better start saying something different. How are you going to say something different? You're going to have to put the Word of God in your mouth. 
Hallelujah. Day and night and meditate on it and speak it and feed on it and renew your mind to the Word of God so that you're no longer conformed, fashioned, and shaped according to this world. But your metamorphosis of your mind brings you into the place that you can prove that perfect good, good will, good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. And His good, perfect, acceptable will is your complete and total victory. Not your lack. Not your defeat. Not your hee-haw song. No, that's the other one. Where are you tonight? It's the gospel my wife's song. The other hee-haw song was gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have the luck at all. Folks, now I'll be honest with you. The reason they know so well is they did, they did a hee-haw pastor's anniversary last year. And they just did a spoof on hee-haw with all that stuff. But that's the way the world thinks. They think it's, you know, there's no hope. The Bible says in Hebrews, I'm still going to go back to Joshua 1. Thought I forgot about it, didn't you? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What is the lack of hope? Despair. The lack of hope is despair. You despair over what you don't have or can't get. People are despairing in our country right now because of the economy. 90% of the jobs created in the past two years have been part-time jobs. People are despairing. They're losing their jobs because the employees don't hire full-time people anymore. They don't want to pay the, the price of the, the health care. People are despairing. But I want to tell you something. We're the church of the living God. And our God, they may, the people of the world may trust in chariots. They might trust in governments. And they might trust in government programs. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. So you're going to have to get your eyes off. You, you, listen, you're going to turn your TV off. You're just going to turn it off. I want to be informed. Go pray in tongues. You can get informed. You can get informed by the Holy Ghost. Come on now. The Holy Ghost can tell you what you need to know. And I will tell you something. If the Holy Ghost tells you something, it's not going to be full of despair. It's going to be full of hope. Are you here? Why? So your faith has something to give substance to glory to God. Think of the things the Bible wrote to the people of Israel. Think of the things that the Bible wrote to the church. You, you think of where the church was when Paul was writing his letters. They were under Roman persecution. He was in prison for half the letters. But there was a hope. And you're going to feel, you're going to stir your heart up to hope. By speaking what God's word says. So that your faith can last. See, a lot of people got faith. They don't have any hope. They've lost their hope. They've lost their expectancy that God will do stuff. They believe he can, believe he does, believe he, you know, he will. They just don't, they just kind of lost the hope that he's going to. They've lost the hope so much they don't even talk about things of God anymore. Honey, God did not bring that to your doorstep. God did not do that to you. Satan, but what did Jesus say? That when the sower sows the word, the thief cometh immediately to steal the word sown in their heart. And if you can't get it, look, if you can't get it immediately, then it'll get to the place where it's on shallow ground, and when it, as soon as it starts to come up, the sun will come up and scorch it. And then if you can't get it with, with sun scorching it, he'll bring in the cares of this world and the lust of other things. And it chokes the word. Satan is working in that process all the way up to the point. But these are which are sown on good ground. And bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, some even 100 fold. He's working from the very beginning. He comes to try to steal the word. If he can't steal it, then he scorches it. If he can't scorch it, then he wants to choke it out. And if he can't do that, woo, glory. I said, woo, Glory. I said glory. Why? Because then we're bringing forth fruit. See, that's what he doesn't want. He doesn't want fruit bringer forthers. Yeah, that'll work. 
That work for y'all? <laughs> Satan's trying to stop us from becoming fruit bringer forthers. All right, those who bring forth fruit. I'm trying to make a noun out of it. <clears throat> you can't do that. How many use Clorox? How is it really Clorox? Is it a store brand? Clorox is not bleach. Clorox is bleach, but it's not the name bleach. Bleach is bleach. So I can make up nouns. How many ever Windex your windows? No, you use a glass clean on your windows. The name brand was Windex. You didn't Windex your windows. You cleaned your windows with a glass cleaner. But we call it Windex in your windows. You need the Clorox in clothes. You need to bleach your clothes. So you are fruit bringer forthers. So you're not going to get it. See, you, see you, if you're going to put that word in and meditate on it day and night, that you may have said, I'm getting back to Joshua 1 8. See, your thought I forgot about Joshua 1 8, didn't you? If you're going to put that word in you, you're meditating that word day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. What does this say then? And it says, for then, and I like to add this, and only then. Because that's really what's implied here. If you will meditate on the word of God, if you will feed it and put, you know, and um, keep the word of God in you and meditate on it day and night and observe to do, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Or the Hebrew actually says, deal wisely in the affairs of life. How did it happen? Because you began to feed on and meditate on and observe to do the Word. <clears throat> Amen. Notice God, listen, I'm going to say something here. There's good success and there's worldly success. The worldly success always has a price tag with it you can't afford. It's like shopping on Rodeo Drive in Hollywood. If you need to ask, you're in the wrong store. <coughs> Are you here? Now, let me say something. I don't say this to be critical of anybody, but if you, if you go study your history, uh, we, have, we have what they, they used to call the Kennedys, the modern day, John and Jacqueline, the modern day Camelot. They, 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 they were New Englanders, they were Irish, and so everybody wanted the king and queen. You know, these people in America, listen, we tried the king and queen stuff. It didn't work. Okay? Everybody wanted out of England and out of Europe because they didn't like monarchies. It doesn't work. You end up with peon system. And guess who the peon is? Us. Unless you're the multimillionaires, you're the peons. Monarchies are not what we want. Hello. Israel tried it. God wasn't happy about it. Anyway. But they always called the Kennedys, you know, the Camelot. They always said there's Camelot. All the modern day, you know, they're basically America's king and queen. Go back and study their success. Their dad was a wealthy, wealthy multimillionaire. Pretty well known. He got his money, bootleg and liquor, back in Prohibition. Study what happened to all the family. The daughter born mentally ill. They locked her up and, 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 and did, all, they did, did all kinds of, uh, of uh, medical experimentation, removing parts of the brain, all kinds of stuff on her. How many of the kids have been killed? John was assassinated. Robert was assassinated. The grandson died in a plane crash. Go through the family. Is that good success? Why? Because they, they did not get it biblically the, the success did not come godly hello see that's world see worldly success looks great i'd hate to think that my children grew up and lived as multimillionaires all of them got killed in some tragic way i want good success see a good man leaves inheritance to his children's children Amen? See, good success is he gives us the power to get wealth and adds no sorrow therewith. Bible success is sorrowless. It's a blessing. Hello? I had this guy a few years ago. Remember he said he was going to tithe when he won the lottery? And you study what happened to that guy. 
I mean, he, he basically went crazy almost with his money. Now, Creflo has it right. You ever heard Creflo Doll say this? Money's a magnifier. Money's a magnifier. It simply magnifies what's already there. And if you've got character and you've got integrity and you've got the right things in you, they can hand you the money and you'll still be there. Um, a number of years ago, we had Van Crouch here, and in, 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 we've had him numerous times, but a long time ago we had him in, and we were just sitting around talking with him. He said, do you know that 80-some percent of professional basketball players retire bankrupt? Now, that, that may have changed, and I think it has changed because if, you, the people like Michael Jordan have begun mentoring programs for these young guys because these agents were blood-sucking the daylights out of these kids. They come and they can play ball, they can sign multi-million dollar contracts, and they just spend all their money and let them keep thinking they had this high lifestyle, had all this money for retirement. When they retired, they had nothing. What did they do? They simply took the lifestyle they were living without the money and elevated it with the money. So if they were doing cheap drugs with no money, when they got lots of money, they started doing designer drugs. They just elevated the lifestyle. See, that's not godly success. God says, if you'll feed on the word of God so that you can observe to do according to what's written therein, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success or deal wisely in the affairs of life. See, by speaking what the word says and feeding on the word, and the whole counsel, not just the part you like. You can't leave out that stuff that tells you about, you know, integrity and this and that and all that. You can't just leave that out. You can't think because you've got money and you're a Christian with money, you can go run around somebody else's wife in the church. It don't work that way. Hello? Just because you can buy money and, and, and make all the ministers think you're something else because you, you keep throwing money out there in, in wads. Honey, it's going to catch up with you eventually. You can't do it. See, man can be impressed with money, but God, God looketh on the heart. And God's word's so full of wisdom. And if you'll speak what the Word of God says, you'll live a life of success financially, emotionally, spiritually. You'll live your life full of success. And you're going to deal wisely in those affairs. Why? Because the Word of God is wisdom. Remember that one of the names of the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Wisdom and Counsel. Amen. And see, when you're speaking the Word, who's he? He's the teacher. I said, he's the teacher. And he is that spirit of wisdom and counsel in your life. Hallelujah. If you, I tell you, we, we just need more people speaking the word and listening to the Holy Ghost. He'll keep you out of a whole lot of trouble. Before you go on a date, men, read Proverbs. Don't let the lips of a strange woman lead you that path. Jezebel! Jesse Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis was in an airport one time. Had a layover. And this woman came up to him and just, just came up to him and told him she wanted to sleep with him. She seen him on television. She knew who he was. I want, she want, I want to have sex with you. You know what he did? No, no baby, I, I can't do that. I, 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 I keep my flesh under. Jezebel! She's a Jezebel! The spirit of Jezebel is on this woman! Out loud, right there in the airport. When he opened his eyes, she was gone. <laughs> I wonder why. Everybody thought he was crazy. He got rid of her. See, what he, he'd been reading Proverbs. Are you here? See, wisdom came out. That woman will get you in trouble. Now, now, now men, let me tell you something. When you get double nickels like me, and the only reason your hair is not gray is because you put dye on it. And, 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 and the leg hair on your leg, you, have to, you can count them now. Because, you, know, you know, as you get older, your body, you're, like, you know, I used to have legs like Nathan. My hair, I, my hair, he's got hairy legs. Mine like that when I was, they ain't like that no more. It's like, dear God, where did it go? Shut up. <laughs> and some babe comes looking at you and, and sweet talking you. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. Because you ain't all that, and you ain't that hot. She thinks you got some money. See, if you listen to the Holy Ghost, he'll keep you out of trouble. I said, he'll keep you out of trouble. 
Men can be so dumb. Going to trade my wife in for a new model. Yeah, and then she's going to pack up the bank account and take it down the road. First chance she gets. You'd be trying to go back to get the old model back. Too late, she done picked up a new model herself. Anyway. Some of you young folks don't, you, just, you get older. Wait till you, hear, wait till you get older. <laughs> Brenda Timberlake over in, Rock, over in Creedmoor. Anybody know Mac and Tim, Brenda Timberlake? And Brother Mac's going to be the Lord, but, but Brenda. Now, I didn't know this, but see, see in, in black culture, in the churches, if they want to have sex with somebody, they, they take the hand, they shake it, and they put the middle finger into the palm of their hand when they shook the hand. And so she's shaking hands with her husband at the door. And one of the church members came by and did that to her. And it's, it's, it's a real sneaky, little sly thing, you know. Hey, baby, I wanna, hey, look, I want to have sex with you, but you don't have to tell Mac about it. It's okay. And she stopped and just right there on the spot said, don't you act like a dog if you want some ass for it. Into that. <laughs> Amen. See, the wisdom of the Holy Ghost will get you where you get, you, you'll be able to say the right things at the right time, keep you out of trouble. It'll help you keep, it'll help keep you out of sin. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's the Eastern Carolina black folks. I don't know. She's the one that said it, not me. Eric said, I didn't know about that. <laughs> Brenda's the one that told that, not me. I was just, I'm just repeating her story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know about that, Jerry? Okay, so Jerry knew about it. I ain't going to ask you if you ever tried it because Janice is somewhere. <laughs> She'd be coming down here and hurt you. I set you up bad, didn't I? <laughs> oh, me. Where, are you from California? Oh, okay. Feeding on the Word of God. Then we move right back out of all that, right back into the Word. If the Word can't be practical in your life, there's no need to have it. If we'll feed on the Word of God. Remember Joshua says, meditate in this book of law day and night. Don't let the part out of your mouth. Meditate day and night. You may have observed to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Your confession begins to flow out of the abundance of the meditation of your heart. And it begins, remember Proverbs 18, 21, the power of life and death. Let's just say the governing factor in the concerning the realms of life or death is found in the tongue. James says the tongue is an unruly evil no man can tame. You can't tame it in the flesh, but you can tame it with the word. The word of God will govern the tongue. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk life. We're going to talk faith. We're going to talk out of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Remember Jesus told him one day, he said, <clears throat> don't take thought of what you'll say in that hour, for the Holy Ghost will give you the words to say. What's he talking about? He's talking about living out of your spirit, not out of your head. You can have your Romans road map, and four spiritual laws, and I'm, look, I'm, not, don't, don't, I'm not mocking that. I'm just saying, if you do everything you do by the Romans roadmap of the four spiritual laws of the campus crusade, Baptists use, a lot, the, the Baptists use the Romans roadmap. And it's, it's, these are great things. They're, they are great points to follow. But if that's how you witness to every single person and don't ever yield to the Holy Ghost, he said, don't take thought. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Because you can start down your Romans roadmap, and that Rastafari might know it better than you. Sometimes they do. And you need the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about now living a life out of an abundance you place in you so that the words of your mouth, the, the things you speak, are coming out of the abundance of life. See, you're not going to be able to get the abundance of life in the world system. 
You're going to have to get it from a depository in your human spirit that you put it in there. Can you say amen? Anybody get blessed? Anybody get help? 